session of the inaugural edition of the Multitude Art Prize Discourse Series. We've had um, a pretty full day of very, very interesting discussions. And um, <coughs> what perhaps I was slightly worried about was the format that this, that this event would, would take, that they're all in the form of discussions whether the conversations would flow or not. And um, I'm very happy to experience that, uh, that, that, that the experience that the conversations have been flowing onto the pavement outside during cigarette breaks as well, which is great. I'll just very quickly try to summarize uh, the, the four sessions today as quickly as I can. The first session was about um, multitude and relevance potentiality in terms of artistic practice, but in general as well. And um, Zdenko was talking about uh, three, main, three main issues. Is one is lack of historicity, which mirrors Eastern Europe and Asia. Is the, the idea of delay between different geographical regions, uh, regions and lack of infrastructure as well, as well as the important idea of timeliness. Jack was talking about government control the art market pressures and influence that comes after the opening up of the systems and the art as an agent of empowerment within the, the civil society that is filling the vacuum that the government isn't filling, or certainly the Israeli government isn't filling. Um, and then there's a contrast between the richness of the Sharjah Foundation and also the, the, the dearth of, of material resources at the Amamal Foundation we're working right now. Then Ravi was talking about the transformation of capacity. The institution functions as a police of culture. That's something to, that's something to think about and something to discuss, I'm sure. Um, and the idea that we need to produce our own context in order to transform the idea of potential, now that Asia is more globalized than ever. November talks about two exhibitions at SALT. That's the institution that you worked for in Istanbul. Um, one is an artist, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, the artist, you can remind us, um, who is uh, producing during the, um, during the coup, de, coup regime, and the other is the Taiping Tianguang exhibition. Um, Patrick was talking about um, also two exhibitions that he done. <coughs> one is a, a history, history of art history, the other is an, a, Southeast, a Southeast Asian show at, uh, at the Guggenheim. Um, and uh, he wanted us to remember three particular questions. What is Southeast, Southeast Asia if not a region? What is a region if not a collection of countries? And what is a country if not a nation? Second panel um, talked about the idea of multitudes, but in terms of relationship between um, the institutions and their audiences. Uh, Bart started off by um, reminding us of the roots of the word of multitude, which is a Spinoza, multitudo, which has a kind of idea of diversity, which was, uh, which was, uh, which Hobbes was particularly against. Though this is an idea of order as against diversity, uh, diversity as a as a catalyst for chaos. Maybe uh, Mami was talking about in terms of her institution, Mami and. Um, and Bartimeu would ha were having this interesting uh, correlation between uh, the enormous audiences they have, but the percentage of their audience are whether they're they're expert or whether they're tourist is an interesting uh, idea in terms of how we're engaged with their audiences. Jack talked about the break out of the stage of siege in Palestine and seeing what is seeing out and what is seeing in. Um, and Kate was talking about the relevance in terms of professional audiences and ICI um, wanting to engage very particularly with a specialized audience in order to create relevance. And contrasting that with um, the, the aims of Garage in Moscow, which needs to produce a loyal and returning audience through development, through, audience, through program. Um, and Bartimeu was talking about this um, European crisis in which um, funding now in Europe because of the economic crisis has created uh, different agendas in terms of what museum directors are required and who they are required to um, engage with. 
and uh, one important uh, issue was the idea of the art world, which is maybe the idea of the past, versus what is now maybe understood as an art industry. And the third session was in the, the first session of the after afternoon was uh, Zdenka talking to the, re the other Lancia National Museum curators about Lancia National, but beyond that, of course, the idea of networks, institutional networks itself, the idea of heritage as being exclusive, and then wanting to try to break out on something that is more long-term and sustainable, instead of the short-term um, kind of obsession with the event. And then the idea of um, different peripheries came in, um, in that various institutions are central and others are peripheral, and trying to create, create connections between these different mentalities in terms of horizontal, horizontal and vertical relationships, creating social connections of knowledge and commonality. Um, then we went on to the um, the last the last session of the day. I think that's still fairly fresh in our minds, so I won't go through I won't go through that in any detail. Um, and that was just a, a basic overview of the day. And now, confronted with um, a lot of people, I I think one of the um, what the format of, of this session could take would be a conversation. Um, firstly, continuing from those ideas that we just that I just went through again, to see how some of those issues could be um, maybe continued that were unresolved because some of the sessions we had to cut short because of uh, lack of time. Um, so that's conversations to have between various members. I'm sure there's there's uh, issues still to be left, still to be resolved. Um, for a long time to come, so we've got plenty to talk about, but also I want hopefully to hear some um, members of the audience also give their feedback or comments or questions about any of the ideas that came up today. So I think, um, let me start with, oh, where am I going to start? I think I'm going to start with Kate. I'm going to pick on Kate, <laughs> because I feel like it, because I'm the moderator. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm going to start by uh, asking Lugier up there to talk. <laughs> Lugier, I'm not sure how long you've actually been in the audience, but Lugier is the person who has set up the Long March, um, both as a foundation and now as a gallery. And he's somebody, when I first started understanding um, anything to do with anything about Asia in general and China specifically, I learned a lot from Lugier because he's the person who, um, in terms of being an outsider, um, his voice, or the Long March voice, kind of came quite early to trying to understand how to create a different kind of structure, a different um, network, um, a network between like-minded individuals. So I wonder if, um, I don't know how much you've, you've heard, but I wonder if you could just kind of give your perspective a little bit on um, some of what you have heard today, just to pick on you. Can I... Can I do later? Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, no. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very difficult for me because I, um, I haven't been here for long enough to, okay. to engage. Okay, well, we'll let you off. Thank you. Thank you. But only for now. Yeah, is there anybody else from the... Um, there's a number of us sitting up here that are concerned about a lot of you out there that have had to sit silently for a very long time. So now's the time for an outburst or um, for telling, saying what's been missing from the conversation. In fact, we came here to listen to you. Bautian 
这是提给那个 f i e l 的问题。然后 calling 的是就是呃各个各地的美术学院那个、呃、美术馆还在方兴未艾。呃，你知道不知道，就是各地的院长们和馆长之间有没有一种联合的意向？就比如说王黄生跟高世明啊，或者是跟李小山啊，或者跟其他人之间有没有某种联盟的意向？以及这种这种事情会不会有地方政府出面来支持或者反对？谢谢。I'll just translate that.、Um, the question was put to、uh, Phil and, and me. Uh, to Phil, it was a question about、um, whether UCCA has plans for creating a,、um, a network of museums or maybe a franchise of museums.、Um, and、um, the, question, the question to me was whether I was aware of、um, networks between various museum directors in, within China,、uh, like those that Phil mentioned earlier today,、uh, and whether that this would be.、Um, They would be in favor of creating such museum networks within China, or not? That I will just use Chinese to answer because today we talked about Chinese is too small. This this question can only say that, uh, Guggenheim, the current Guggenheim, Kolonz, for the influence of the art world is too great. Because my father also asked me the same question: Kolonz, do you have any plans for expanding the expansion? We are now very busy trying to make this area into a public display. I think that we can achieve this plan in two or three years. We have already started from the ground up. 呃，全面依靠老油的这个拨款的这个时代，呃，它的这个比例已经降到了呃百分之四十左右吧，而且是一个固定的年限，就是给多少其他的自己解决。那我们自己通过各种渠道，包括零售。包括这个场地的租赁，但当然不是展览的这个租赁，而是这种展览空气之中的这个，还有就是这个做了一些借了一些资深活，一些特别的项目啊、呃，还有就是还有一个赞助，就是发培养了一大波这个中国的藏家，就是愿意来支持。那么我。Uh, I, I'll translate myself in a minute. It's fine. Uh, <笑>然后就是说。嗯、um, ，我觉得这样的努力可能要比第一是我没有能力去再做，我们也没有这个计划。呃，我觉得这样的努力就是把好一个这种，它可能范围已经限定好了，把它能真正的转起来，这这个比那个可能还要更。有意义，在某一种，就是这个团队能建设的更好，这个做的项目能不能做的更有意义？这个展览哪怕你数量减少，你质量提高，呃，这些都是问题。呃，当然也希望可以跟国内的一些其他的美术馆去进行一些合作。我们今年其实也也也试过几次，呃，我不一一点名，但是就比如说，能不能就是比如说我们做完一个展览。呃，让他到第二到苏州也好，到这个上海啊，或者是，呃，有一些合作伙伴，呃，看上去就是很多是这种有硬件没有软件的，所以才会找到我们。那么，呃，你越把这个不视为问题，它就越成为问题，因为呃。可能谈好了的，然后就发现可能没有能力去完成或者是实施，呃，或者是可能兴趣根本没在这儿，而是完全是为了混一个这个，呃，工作指标才进行的这种交谈，都有这种可能，呃，所以就是说我希望就是呃，随着这个中国这个美术馆的浪潮，可能会多出一些志同道合的可以。真正的不仅仅是，比如说我们拿了一个展览再放到你那儿，因为我们也这种方式已经很很腻了。就是比如说海外的展览接过来，最后一大笔费用我们得来解决。呃，二是就是可能欧洲的美术馆把我们视为小猴子，就是在这种呃树林里面活动，就不会认真的对待，就会觉得啊，来到了中国作品肯定有损害啊，或者是这，呃，所以就说，呃，以后如果能够。呃，比如说，就像彭毕度和泰特和 MoMA， 比如一起说我们要做雷斯顿斯顿，还是雷斯坦斯坦，我老是搞不清哪个是国家，哪个是画家的展览。呃
，然后一起去发迹，一起去做，这种方式可能会好一些。所以真的是希望，比如说三啊、呃，或者是以后的四方啊，或者是武汉啊这种。呃，我觉得可能以后才可以，因为你跟这个国内的这个官方系统去合作是不是说不可能，而是这这两种模式之间的民间和官方的这种区别，呃，不是说好坏，就是它的运作逻辑，呃，可能要呃分得比较开，呃，使得这个合作经常是完不成的，呃。所以当然是有这个意向，我觉得就如果就是我有两个最大的梦想，可能一个是我们的展览可以开始输出，比如说到海外的一些美术馆，呃，呃，还有一个就是可以在境内呃真正的去建立一个这样的一个一个一个网络，所以就看吧，能不能做到，嗯，谢谢。Yeah, Sorry. Okay.、Uh, so I was just saying that.、Um, The the question was whether we were going to build a chain of museums around China, and I said that it's amazing that we're all kind of the children of Thomas Krenz, even、uh, you know all these years later, because my father actually asked, has asked me that same question,、um, and I, I you know for me it's much more interesting to think about how to make this place sustainable and and reliable、uh, in the long term on its own right, and I was just explaining. We've already gone from a situation where 100% of the funding was coming from a single source, which is the Baron and the Baroness,、um, to one where that number is at around 40 to between 40 and 50%, and it's it's also absolutely fixed. So it's not the kind of like oh this much, but actually it ends up being that much,、um, and that we have all sorts of other channels by which we you know raise revenue, which I won't go into、uh, in English, but. Um, um, That it's still very、um, exciting to think about the possibility of building a network of museums in China,、um, real collaborations that aren't necessary. I, mean, I was saying we, we've actually this year had some discussions with people in other cities in China who come to us because they precisely have this problem of hardware without software,、um, and to whom something like taking an exhibition of you know, Taran Simon or Xie Deqing might look like a good idea at the beginning, but then. Uh, as the discussions go on, it becomes clear that they really don't have the interest、uh, or the depth of interest to to actually take that and make it reality. And maybe the beginning conversations were coming out of a, a totally different sort of perspective.、Um, and yet, it it does feel like we are on the verge of something with institutions、uh, like Sufang and like what,、um, where you might actually have this possibility in China. Um, or broader regionally. I mean, I would, Mommy, we should really do something together. It would be really amazing. Um, um, where like-minded institutions can collaborate in the same way that, say, the Pompidou, the Tate, and MoMA would go and put together a Roy Lichtenstein retrospective,、um, it, as opposed to taking traveling shows from a, a way where we're sort of seen as like apes swinging from the trees who will, you know, break the works and. Need to be assessed high premiums in every different way,、um, and so that's. I think that's all I said. Yeah. 呃，我也简单的回答你的问题。呃，因为因为这个你说的那个体系可能是跟我我是比较陌生的一个体体体系，所以它是可能是属于这个一个政府支持的官方美术馆体系的一个一个内部的网络，因为这个网络本来就是现成的，因为他们都是。首先是一个体制以内的，所以它本身就是说，他们没有一个个人的网络，它其实它的一个体制里边就是本来就是一个现成的一个网络。可是这个这个这方面的那个他们之间的这些联系，可能跟我本人或者是我做的就是我合作的呃，就项目也好还是机构也好，可能没有一个就是可能不是两是两两种体系。所以可能就是我，我不了解他们，也是因为我跟他们这个体系可能是，呃，完全是两回事儿。可是为什么就是要做这么一个集群项目？呃，就是因为，呃，就是怎么能够就是在一个开放的，怎么创作一个开放的一个体系，而不是在就是在，怎么就是我们没有想怎么去打入一个更封闭的体系。而是怎么在创造一个更开开放的一个一个格局，呃，所以就是其实就是呃没有一个我们没有其实一个什么样的一个局限
，而是就是通过项目能够创造新的一些呃网络的可能性，也就是这样。So I was just saying that um the the networks that um are formed between various Chinese museum directors, government museum directors, is is a, is a system that I'm not so familiar with because it's um it's a system and it's it's a network within itself because it's it's a government um. Um, and it's, it's a government-run uh, system that is based on a government network in the first place. So it is a network, regardless of whether the museum directors have personal relationships with, them, with each other or not. Um, but that is a closed network, it's a closed circuit, and the whole point of us doing um, a project like Multi Art Prize and Discourse Series, um, or many of the other projects that we're talking about today, the whole point of that is actually not to try to get into a closed circuits but actually try to create new open circuits and and the question is like what form of circuits do the you know what it might not be a formal network like well Kate was asking you know why should we do a formal network well it doesn't actually nobody actually said it needs to be a formal network like Nacho Nacional and um, what I was saying about half an hour ago in the last session was exactly that was that well maybe in Asia with all the complexities Actually, it's it's more like the informal, um, the the you know it's more like the the ad hoc networks that that proliferate, rather than um, a network that will last long time. Anyway, so I didn't I didn't say that. That's I think that um, La Internacional is a formal network because you need to be formal in order to obtain. The, the sponsorship uh, of the European Union. Before the international existed, there were more informal networks, and I would say that we have been working, working through informal networks all our lives, um, here too. So the, the, but I remember that when the first meetings, uh, mainly in Ljubljana, uh, we didn't speak about the European Union, we spoke about uh, the intentions and the ideas that would bring us together. And that led us to the finances, but the ideas were first, and then hopefully the money came, because without the money, it don't be much. Uh, I would like to say something a bit blasphemous in this situation of beautiful new future of networks coming. And I really like of you having spoken about an old network. Uh, I've myself been instrumental, because in Belgium the situation was very much like it is still being spoken about now in China. You had informal, formal networks, like formalized power systems that acted somehow behind the scenes. And they have been replaced, and I've myself given, yeah, I've even gone into politics for some time to write legislation to replace this by a kind of more objectivated, expert-driven uh, reality. Now, I'm more and more, ever more wondering whether if you look at it historically, it's really uh, an advantage. I think it's merely a change. And I think one of the things which we, we might ask ourselves, will we be any better? Yeah. And on the other hand, I think we might be a little bit more respectful than we tend to be to, for example, someone who in a hard situation uses his capacity, his power, to establish a binding of Shanghai. And so I think it's, it's always easy if you're in a new world to say that the old world is old. But the real question is, I think, shall our new world, what shall be the qualities? And I've ever more stopped to believe in any kind of, um, you know, uh, image of a, a formal solution. And you think it's always about if you have capacity, how do you develop it? How do you not uh, accumulate power for power's sake, but try to, 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 to do something in society? And what I see now in, in, in Europe, for example, is that there's a lot of mediocrity also of the expert system. Or the, and so um, I, I think we should really be very profoundly self-critical also about uh, the, the future we want to take for, because we may just be rhetorical in a different way, um, you know, being beautiful and good, better, network, before, yeah. but, but in the end, like, will we make, what difference will we make? Yeah, I think the uh, Bart touched upon an, an issue, was, which was the idea of whether we, you know us in the new world, well, the new old world. I mean, China is not new; um, it's renewed, let's say. Um, 
looks at, you know, Europe as the old world is, is, is looking old. But I think what, what Ravi said, um, to just to correct your terminology, I think that it didn't say that uh, Europe is old. I think he said it's coming to an end. Um, <laughs> no, of course, of course. Um, but I would like to just maybe hand over to just Ravi just to elaborate on that because that was uh, quite a statement, and uh, and it kind of set a kind of contention between Asia and, and Europe. And I'd like you to elaborate on what you mean by that, and whether that is is there is the other side of the coin, which is if that's if that's coming to end, what is coming into being? Okay. And it's you know, half polemical but half serious, uh, and and the serious part is that Asia is reinventing itself, and I think the curation of the multitude has reinvented cultural geography in a way uh, that. Uh, that, would, that is very interesting. In the same way, if we can reflect on Europe, partly from the outside, partly a world which it inhabits you know, intellectually in a way, a certain project of the welfare state, uh, which in which the museum and culture is, is a part, is now unraveling before us. And the whole debate on who is a European, you know, with, with migrants, with Islam, with new anxieties, new traumas, is playing out before us. And, and I think it's a very interesting moment to reimagine Europe too, maybe. And so, uh, so that, that is, I think, the important question. So, if, if, you know, I remember when, when I was a student, I read this um, essay by Lenin. I think uh, it was ad, uh, Advanced Asia and Backward Europe. It's a kind of playing a pun that, you know, Europe wasn't really advanced because, you know, it's like power is coming through guns. But look at Asia, you know, it doesn't have institutions. It's learning through all kinds of interesting experiments. So. Forget the, the political objective. I think I think you can learn and reverse this model and play around it a little bit. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Just I don't want Bart to take the mic. Welcome. 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 We have spoken a lot about the um, wider networks. I think somebody mentioned it, but we didn't elaborate it probably. Uh, why we are talking so much and why we are into uh, the uh, networking co collaboration. <clears throat> uh, my answer would be probably because the big institutions uh, are not uh, sufficient, uh, sufficient anymore to reflect the totality of the world, because the world becomes uh, too big. So we need another model, and this model can't be concentrated from the same reason, because it's, there are too many artists, there are too many things uh, that uh, can't be concentrated anymore in one hegemonic hands. But at the same time, we have to be aware that the networks uh, have two faces. Uh, so the networks uh, reflect on the one hand the neoliberal networking, so the predominant way of the production today. So this is the constant danger that we have to face. We, we can very uh, soon become just a poor mirror of this uh, dominant model of the production. And as it always is, there is always the contra process. And I think that at least, I hope so, uh, for our network, it, um, um, it was formed exactly uh, in this um, antagonist position to, towards the dominant way of networking. Maybe um, we can now ask Mr. Lutia, who is very shy <laughs> just now, um, to then, because now you've listened for a little longer and you don't have an excuse anymore, um, because maybe your Long March project was actually the creation of a, of a conversation along... A no, 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 nothing to do with Long March project. Oh. Um, and, um, the reason I actually dare not to ask questions is because um, for a long time I've been in a serious uh, mid-career and uh, mid-life crisis. I don't want, you know, my confusion. Um, um, you know, uh, making some impact on the very good energy created here. So, even sitting here longer, I actually do not know how to ask questions, colleagues. But, um, um, 
Because to try, try to say something of my understanding of that work, maybe. Um, I think if, um, as one of the audience here, I might be thinking of network of the, um, the differences and the possibility of how to be fair together, um, the really um, rather ultimate kind of um, similarity and, and differences that all different institutions and different geography are able to negotiate. If we're talking about uh, the network of, you know, a touring show or, or sharing uh, financial means or uh, the new power trying to, you know, challenge the old power, that kind of network is always ongoing and important that we can do in our own conference room instead of talking to audience. So to me, it's more a, a discursive kind of negotiation. What is the point about? Which is fundamental structure about all this very symposium and discussion being going. For myself, my interest would be more um, thinking of how this network can result in two ends. One is research. So um, I very much appreciate, you know, uh, Philip being having conversation with the museum director Yushin about the archival kind of research project and presentation. To me, I think the importance of it is it definitely arrived in the, in the fundamental relationship with us, which is how a, a new institution nowadays can present a new way of production instead of still negotiate on the level of representational politics. So that's why I have my career crisis now, because I, I become a producer instead of a curator, shifting from curating to producing. It's, I'm hoping through a curatorial kind of writing, through exhibition narrative, to do my research. And by doing this, I can have artists as our main researcher. Sorry, I've been talking too much. Thanks. I'm thinking about networks, and um, I mean, it's it's great that you mentioned this idea of research because uh, uh, I think the next step would be uh, thinking, of course, of the idea of longevity. Is that the networks are basically providing the pool of information. So if we're talking about archives, and somebody mentioned, I'm sorry, uh, one of the panel uh, members mentioned the idea of the collection and, of course, the archive and what happens. So uh, my thinking now runs along the line of how we can provide a taxonomy or a common classification and uh, information dissemination system that uh, all, everybody within the network can access this information and everybody can share. So you don't need as an institution to collect be that objects or archives or information, but uh, you need to make sure that you put in place a system where it's not only you who can sift through and read the material, but anybody else across the globe can access it, read it, uh, uh, you know, extract the information that he or she needs and basically share it through the work and the production. So uh, I think the next step or the next level that the network needs to take is not a common project, uh, a two-year or five-year project, but more of an open-ended uh, 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 classification or whatever you want to call it, uh, 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 common uh, a language that everybody can use in order uh, uh, to filter through the information that any particular institution produces, uh, archives it, and makes it uh, accessible through different means. Of course, now the internet is, is, is dominant in this, in this sense. So this is 
what my thinking of networks is. This is the second level, I think. Uh, maybe I see it a little bit different. Um, you, you kind of like suggest a universal language. Classification. Classification. Um, still, I think it's interesting to, what I think is, networks are not only amongst people. In fact, they exist amongst works. And the exhibition of Duchamp here is an example in kind, a very beautiful way to make Duchamp's work contingent again. It, it doesn't become, it, it's not a fetish anymore. It's not just this kind of like thing, you know it looks like this, and when you see it, it's this, aha, and lab, it's, oh yeah, this is the piece, so the piece exists in real. But because of this exhibition, with these interpretations, with the comments, with kind of like a very uh, unexpected kind of, for us, Europeans, kind of uh, re-encounter with Duchamp, something shifts, something very interesting happens. And I think that is kind of a, a when an artwork gets negotiated again through a network that is built around it, it stays alive, it stays in a certain, it stays in a conversation. It's not about the object itself. It's kind of like when the object is not made contingent again, it will die. Uh, and, and then it becomes this commodity fetish maximum for maybe this other realm of uh, the art world we are probably not, not interested in, but we are, we are less kind of like contributing to. We try rather to make contingencies. And that's what I think that we maybe missed a bit. There was a question raised about collections um, by Bartomeu to the panel I was chairing, and we didn't really answer on that, or we didn't really tackle that. I'm not necessarily going to tackle it now, but it's more also about this idea of continuity. How you make continuity by, in a way, by cre creating history, by accumulating things, but rene renegotiating them all the time. And when Luigi talks about this archival uh, kind of like idea I uh, discussed with Lucio, it is not necessary to build up an archive or to make, to, to step into the fashion of archives as exhibition, etc. It's rather like to, to have a, a way to make a collection and a series of projects, exhibitions that makes the art world contingent again. It's kind of like brings it in a, uh, another kind of like discussion instead of like, oh, we also have a Marlene Dumas or we also have a this or that. It, it, that makes, it's, it's very sad when you reposit the works in these kind of uh, collections that are just only showing they have certain things. Uh, what do you do with it? How do you relate it? Is there a possibility that you can renegotiate the Marlene Dumas with uh, ideas that are in the collection of manuscripts uh, the museum owns of the Republican era? Are there kind of like, are there moments that you could connect those things? Um, or maybe misinterpretations, because I, I don't think it's always, that comes also to this conflict, but that was among, among people in networks, but I also think some of the most productive things happen when artworks get misinterpreted, or it's not necessarily a, a that when you say the word misinterpreted, it's like as if it's false, but it's not false. It's it's always a legitimate interpretation, and something else goes on. And that I think is very important, maybe to the to the scene here in China, as far as I'm informed enough, is this kind of like moments that you break the, this kind of ongoing time and production and events that you can can like create these little short circuits around the meaning or the received meaning of, uh, of works. And certainly when there is like even no received meaning, but only that you know it's an important work that has cost a lot of money, how can we kind of like shift that assumption around works? And I think that is, that is maybe a, a thing we share among some uh, individuals that are, are kind of like uh, developing new institutions. I also res would like to respond to the idea of continuity and talking about the temporality of the uh, network. That uh, um, I think that it's the beauty of the network is it ar arise when it's necessary. And uh, once we start thinking about uh, how to sort of sustain those network, then uh, we have to find some sort of systematized way of having this network. And then uh, I think uh, having heard about the uh, international is that it really came out of some sort of necessity or occasion that you happen to work together. 
and then um, that really gives you an opportunity of knowing others but also knowing about yourself and so this for me I think to have this multitude is that to have the awareness that there is someone else not you alone and uh, it's not about your own curation it's not about you and relationship with others and this kind of network and then also uh, foundation really gives you the awareness of how you situate yourself among others and uh, so that's more conceptual or sort of fluid idea of the network it doesn't has to be uh, concretized in a way I, I want to try and go back to I think it was Bartimo that talked about Eric Hobsbawm was it, was it you that brought up Hobsbawm? Who brought up Eric Hobsbawm? Jubesh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, um, for those of you that weren't here earlier, the, the story was that Eric went to, or Mr. Hobsbawm, went to lecture migrant workers. And um, he starts by saying, I'm nothing, you know, I'm, I'm very small, I don't know anything, I want to learn from you. And then uh, one of the migrant workers stands up and says, so why are you here then? What's, you know, what's the point? What have you got to say? And there's something about that that I, I'm feeling quite uncomfortable sitting up here at the moment. Um, and I, I think there's, there's something about that in relation to, um, there's a kind of knowingness and a, um, a desire to um, kind of say, say what we all know and say what our networks are. I mean, personally, I've been writing lists of all the networks that I'm involved in that are nothing to do with European networks or Asian networks because I'm based in the United States. So there are multiple networks that are happening um, continuously, and I have a feeling that there are multiple networks that every single one of us are involved in. They're just not necessarily being articulated right now. So the question is how much you say and how much you say, I don't know. You know, It's the kind of knowing and the not knowing and how to share within that. that there's something in that that I want to kind of try and bring into this, because otherwise it, it's making me uncomfortable. Um, maybe that what combines your comment with Mami's comment was um, the idea of necessity. I mean, networks hopefully uh, are born out of necessity rather than out of convenience. And for me at least, I, I, that's how I maybe would define a network that actually has meaning or a network that has less meaning, is whether it's a network of convenience, because it, it makes you look good or it's just convenient, or whether it's, a ne it's, it's really it's born out of necessity. And I think that um, what this conversation is about or, or why this project was brought about was the feeling of that necessity. Um, and that comes back to the idea of being periphery that Zdenka was talking about, the idea of the periphery, and, and that China is vast, extremely important, and still peripheral in terms of contemporary art. Not peripheral as a region in itself, it's huge, but peripheral in terms of its connection with other regions. And, and I, I just feel that if you're in the United States or in Europe and the connectivity, uh, you can take that for granted. And whereas here you do kind of feel sometimes that you're in a cul-de-sac. And uh, people are very happy because they, you know, the art economy is happening, there's a market, people can live, but at the same time you see other very, very serious problems developing out of that cul-de-sac which you would call the kind of incestuous of the market and so on. And you really need, you know, like a, like a, it feels like sometimes like a, a pond with still water. You need that outlet. You need the water to flow in and flow out. And that's, it's a very simple thing, really. Um, and it kind of is happening a little bit, but uh, what these conversations are about is, is how to actually make it happen on a more sustained and more serious level so that the, the the, the, the conversations are happening not just ad hoc, but actually, you know, they, they result in things, they result in books, they result in exhibitions, they result in projects. And I think that it's, it's, that's the necessity I'm, I'm talking about, and it's not just in China either. I wonder if there's a way of thinking about how to amplify the networks that aren't being amplified, rather than necessarily the creation of new networks, because it's, it's one of those things where I think there's, there are lots of things you know, the, the kind of production of knowledge. Well, I mean, I think this is, um, I mean, this particular project is about finding, in a way, not about, but one of the things that it potentially can do is amplify the existing networks that I certainly don't know about. 
But if they're there, maybe we can create a, a program, a, a project structure, whereby they become known, and then if they're interesting for other people, then there's a way of, of it being amplified, both in terms of people knowing about it, but actually, you know, actually get involved in it if they exist. Are there any more questions? Um, Okay. Yes. Regarding your periphery question, um, are we contemporary art? Um, are we more marginalized in China or are we more marginalized in global situation? Your experience. Well, I could ask you the same question. I mean, you're you're much more a part of the Chinese um, situation than I am. Done a lot more work, um, and also you're connected internationally. Um, so it's 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 interesting question because even though I'm kind of I look British I'm half British half Chinese, but actually my professional career in contemporary art has been only in China. So I'm kind of not looking at this from the international perspective at all. I'm looking at this as you know kind of the guy stuck in China. I don't you know I'm not saying I'm stuck in China because I don't want to be in China. I want to be in China. I choose to be in China. However, you do feel that there isn't the connectivity that I could just do these kind of like it flows naturally. The, 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 the borders are porous. They're not as porous as, as I, I would like them to be. So maybe that's not really a question for me to look at it from the outside, because I can't. I'm, I'm very much within the local situation. What's interesting maybe is to connect that into the United States situation and what I'm listening to people saying in Moscow. It's like, so these, these mega powers, you know, it's like there are, in, in Moscow, people are telling me that it's very difficult to connect to the kind of the people that are next door to you because the Eastern European question um, doesn't often include the, the big bad Russia. You know, so there's a kind of lack of you know, ability to be able to kind of create any kind of dialogue or discourse because you've almost kind of inherited just by being Russian in 22 or 32 something that, you know, you weren't necessarily a part of. And it's the same thing in the United States. There's never people from the United States. I mean, you're from the United States, but you represent China in this situation. Um, but there, there are never people from the United States that are asked to talk about networks or collaboration or... And yet, um, it, it happens. And the fact that ICI can put on programs that introduce different things that are going on around the world and it can be a packed audience means that there is interest. But I, I think that some of these kind of much larger scale countries are now um, kind of blighted, if you like, with the fact that they, I don't know if they feel they don't have, people don't feel they have the right or there's, it's not necessarily just about access to information. It does seem to be stymied in a number of different places. Uh, I think that um, the, the answer could be, uh, you know, that the networks uh, are very often the results of the kind of minor positions, uh, at least at the moment, it probably uh, will change. So, for example, uh, as far as for Eastern Europe, um, there were some exhibitions in major um, Western museums, like in Pompidou and so on, and there was also an African exhibition in Pompidou, and then when big exhibition was done, they said, oh, we already had Eastern or African show, you know? So one of the reasons uh, that we created um, international network, besides a big European money, of course, <laughs> was, uh, you know, to give um, this permanent visibility to, to you know, to get out of this uh, frame of uh, being presented uh, as a region through some, you know, fashionable uh, shows. So th that, that came out from, from the necessity, and I think, you know, that's good. Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, what Zdenka is ah, getting us a long day. Zdenka <laughs> said, um, in terms of the regionality and getting out of that regionality, I mean, it, it, I think there's so many artists, and including curators, who are so sick and tired of taking part in Chinese shows or being identified as Chinese artists. But that, that is the kind of the, the need that is the, the, the need that, uh, that, that is there when uh, the artists aren't plugged into conversations and ideas. 
that are, let's say, um, a natural course for, for more domestic artists. And so, for me, one of the most interesting challenges uh, when thinking about is, you know, building a small institution that wants to tie in with other institutions is exactly that, is initiating conversations, dialogues on certain topics that we both share interests on, and then plugging artists into those, you know, that happen to relate strongly to those conversations, so that when there's a show including a Chinese artist or whatever artist, the artist is not identified with a country but with an idea. And, and that also allows the artist to then, you know, get, be part of a conversation that then extends the relationship with this artist, with other artists who, are, who also share that idea. And curators and institutions can understand that. But if you just think, you know, China, China also has really interesting contemporary artists. Here's an example. If that's the approach that exhibitions have, there's always, there's, there's always the country comes first. And that's, it's a very big... It's a very big thing, that country label, to get over. So, in a way, that's my, my approach, maybe. Um, and it's also my desire in creating, not creating, but talking about these institutional networks, in that without those networks, then how do these conversations happen? And how about these, let's say, not convivial relations, but exactly, let's say, these, these relations based on solidarity, based on shared, shared vision, um, then create these, then make these conversations happen, and the conversations make the projects happen. That's, um, I think um, I know this conversation could continue uh, long into the night, um, and I'm really, really um, excited that we have had a very lively debate throughout the day, starting at 10 o'clock this morning, um, all the way up to uh, half past six this evening. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's. I think quite a few of us need a drink now. <laughs> um, so um, I would like to thank all the members, of course, of Lanta Nationale, all the curators from all around Asia, um, all our partner curators of the Multitude Art Prize, everyone on stage. Please, everyone, uh, thank them very much for their. But also, um, I would like to also thank everyone who's here in the audience for listening to us and talking to us and, and maybe some of these ideas will be food for thought and we who are here in China can continue these conversations here after everyone else has gone back to respective institutions. So thank you also, thank you for coming very much. We would like to thank Colin and uh, Multitude Art Foundation for uh, their hospitality. And um, we repeat, we repeat uh, the gratitude to the audience. You have been very patient and, and um, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. And, and thank, thanks to the great translators. Thank you.